the Packers still own the Chicago Bears, but that game gave Green Bay more questions than it did answers. The Cowboys have officially brought down the roof, but not in a good way. What happened to a team that had Super Bowl aspirations in 2024? And in New York, that is a complete mess. The Giants have officially benched their starting quarterback. Is it time for the Jets to do the same? That and more coming up on Sports Talk with Dad right now. Welcome back to another amazing episode of Sports Talk with Dad. As always, my name is Kyle, and I cannot call this Sports Talk with Dad without the man sitting next to me, a man who continues to ruin segments on this show, my dad, Tim. I do not ruin segments. You do. So every single week at the end of our shows, we pick five games. Yes. Unless you screw up one week, we pick six, where we we pick winners and losers. It's right. called Picks Guaranteed to Go Wrong. Uh-huh. What is going on with you this year? I have no idea. I what mean, were you this past week? Four and one. Jeez, man. I Look. I mean, you have like a 700 record this year. I, well, we're going to get into it later on, but right now I'm 38 and 19. Unacceptable. My picks are guaranteed to go wrong because I'm not doing hey, well. Look, if anybody goes to Vegas and bets on my picks, they're fools. Apparently not this year. So at the end of the show, we're going to have to... Uh, workshop some new names for this segment and see where we go from there but speaking of things that truly were guaranteed to go wrong oh. that tyson paul fight was a joke that was a snoozer i mean if look tyson was moving a little bit for the first two rounds and they were only two minute rounds he landed 19 punches it was it wasn't i was hoping for rocky balboa he comes out he's there to prove and get it out of his system he was hurt. I think if he wouldn't have had that issue on the airplane, whatever health concern it was, it would have been a very different fight. But his knee was hurt, too. He's wearing a brace. He just wasn't moving. He looked I, old. Honestly, I think if it would have happened in the summer when they were going to do it. That's what I said, yeah. Yeah, then it would have been fine. This just was, thank God they didn't charge for it. It was free on Netflix, which Netflix had their own troubles. I was having trouble getting to watch it. Well, let's talk about that for a second, because here's the scary thing when it comes to Netflix is they are hosting two NFL games, which is going to get a lot more traction than that fight did. I think there was, what, 12 million that tried to watch that fight? And it was buffering. Non I had to watch it from my phone. I officially I couldn't watch it on TV. I couldn't watch it on TV. I had to watch it from my tablet. And it was, which is weird to me. Why did it work on my phone but not on my TV? I don't know. You couldn't cast the fight. No. So that wasn't even an option for me. But it was it was definitely a snoozer. The fight before? Good the two fight. girls fighting? That was great. That was a hell of Did a Did you fight. see that girl's eye? I couldn't watch the interview at the end. Oh. I'm like, I don't want to I see mean, muscle tissue hanging It was out flapping and saying hello the whole interview. Yeah, we don't even talk about I, this anymore. I don't know. It, oh. I feel bad. I mean, Tyson looked like a 58-year-old man. Like I said, I was hoping for Rocky Balboa. I got Rocky five and I'm never happy with that. So it was pretty rough. I think Netflix though learned a lot. I think they needed this because now they can fix whatever they had with the NFL games. Cause if they all of a sudden start buffering oh. like they did for the fight, the NFL is never going to work with them again. No, because fans will lose their minds. Can't have it happen. We'll see what happens for that. Another disaster that is happening is in Tampa Bay. Yeah. Right the, the Rays announced that they're going to play this season at a Class A stadium, George Steinbrenner Field, which like is an hour away from their current stadium in Tampa. It's in Tampa, which I'm going to give that stadium some credit as a Class A stadium. It's really it's nice. Really nice. It's it looks a spring training facility. It looks like an old Yankee stadium. Yeah, it's a spring training facility for the Yankees. Right across from Raymond James Stadium. Next to the airport. Yep. It was designed to be really nice. But it only seats, what, 10,000? I think it's 10 to 12. Why? Nobody's going to go. Okay, here's the other big announcement that, that happened with them. Not only was that announced, but it was announced that they are going to not have a stadium ready until 2029. If then. If then. They might fix the trop, but there's no point in putting public money into fixing the trop if you're going to build a brand new stadium. Why are you not playing in Salt Lake City this year? It's a market that's dying for a team that's willing to spend a lot of money on a stadium why are you not testing out that market? Or, this is what New Orleans did with Oklahoma City. 
The only reason Oklahoma City has a team is because they tested the market after Katrina. This is another perfect opportunity, and you are not taking it. Major League Baseball needs to step in and force this to happen. They cannot allow the Rays to play in a Class A stadium for two or three years. No. And because I'm, I still have my doubts, St. Petersburg doesn't follow the Rays. They don't draw it there. No, they don't it's care. It's still hard to get there. St. Petersburg has uh, so many other things to do. The beach and downtown, and there's a ton of stuff they've to do there. They've been fighting for public funding for over 20 years now, almost since they've been there in, what, 95, 98, whenever 98. they came into existence. I think the stadium was built in 93 to try to get the White Sox. Nobody came until 98 when they got the expansion raise. I, I just don't understand why you wouldn't take this opportunity to test the market of Salt Lake City. That is where your next team is going to be. Or in, or in Louisville. Louisville. Or Nashville. My Nashville or yeah. Louisville? Where are Nashville. you going? I think they you could test it in Nashville, too. They've got the AAA team. I was thinking the Louisville Redbirds, the AAA franchise that used to be there. But no, it, Nashville wants a team badly. But, they do, but the mayor screwed that up by saying they're not giving any type of right. public funding for a new stadium. So that they're out. Salt Lake City is a perfect place to go. And for all of my Rays fans that put in the comments all the time, I don't know what I'm talking about. I lived there for 15 years. Tampa Bay had to close off the top section of the trop because nobody went to those games. Well, and you don't have in a World Series. Yeah. In a World Series, they had to close off the top because they couldn't sell enough tickets. That's not having to live there to see that. That was seen by the entire nation watching baseball. The trop is going to cost over two hundred and fifty million to repair if it can be repaired at all. That's never happening. I as much as I love the Tampa Bay area, it's not a baseball market. It's, it's not. A, it's a great hockey town. Oh, my God, is it a hockey town? Yes. It's a great football town. When the Buccaneers are doing well, they draw. Well, we've talked about this several times where the problem with Tampa and why it's a great hockey town is because everybody is from someplace else, right? Correct. So everybody already has a football team. Now, the, the Buccaneers have done a really good job getting a fan base to adopt them. Mm -hmm. I think that helped a lot when they left the Central. Yes. The Rays, everybody has a baseball team, and nobody's going to go and drive to see a baseball team unless their team comes to town. Hockey, not everybody has a hockey team. And it's in Tampa. Now, and to give the geography of this, the trap is in St. Petersburg. To get to St. Petersburg from almost anywhere, you have to cross the bridge, which are usually jammed before and after the games. Usually. Always. Always. Even if you're coming from Sarasota, the bridge is hard to get over and to get to the stadium. And then when you leave, I mean, the trap wasn't in a great area. And now it's they're, a terrible area. And they're going to refurbish it. I get that. It's urban renewal and all that. I just don't ever see them building the stadium. And it's not going to happen. Baseball, you're right. Baseball needs to step in and say, look, we tried. We tried for 30 years, almost 30 years. We're moving this team. And get them to Salt Lake City so they have a chance to succeed. Because playing in a Class A stadium is going to be... Awful. I it's mean, listen, too hot. you have an empty stadium there that was just left. It's a minor league stadium that holds 15,000 people. I don't understand why this wasn't a real conversation. It's still the Tampa Rays. You just play in Salt Lake City. It fits into our idea of doing new divisions within baseball. Mm -hmm. It gives you that opportunity to see what you can really do out west. Because if you put them in Salt Lake, all of a sudden you can put the Rays with the Rockies and sure. with the Mariners. Or and have a solid Arizona. division. Or Arizona. There's a couple different options there. You have, what is the market there? I looked this up. 1.27 million people in the greater Salt Lake City area that would love to support a baseball team. And not only that, this isn't some sort of expansion franchise where you have to wait for them to win. This is, this is an organization that knows how to win and has been winning. And it's sad because they are a great organization that builds great teams. Nobody goes to watch them. I just don't understand this. Tampa baseball is dead. You're not going to move it into Tampa. If you move it across the bridge into actual Tampa, you may draw. You may. will draw. You will if you put it in a nice area. You build a dome stadium over there, but it's never going to happen. That, it, that, that issue is happen. dead. Just, you have such a great opportunity for Major League Baseball here, and this is where the NFL does it right. The NFL has more power to look at teams and say, this is what we want to try. This is what we're going to do for the league. In baseball, it's a bunch of individual owners and in this situation specifically, it's costing you.
because baseball needs to have more power to step in and say, no, you're going. They did this the same thing in the NBA. They came to the Bucks when the Bradley Center was there and mm-hmm. says, you are either building a new stadium the next three years. Or Seattle's getting the team. Or the NBA is buying this team and moving them. They did the same thing with New Orleans. NBA bought the team, mm-hmm. and they almost left. They ended up figuring it out. It's a bad situation. The Rays need to be better than this. If, if this is actually, But this is the owner saying, well, I like living in Tampa. Okay, make money. This is a problem with revenue sharing. Because if revenue sharing wasn't there in baseball or was designed differently where it had to go to the players, you better move because you're making no money in Tampa Bay. Well, and that's the problem. They line, a lot of owners just line their pockets. But to the Rays' credit, they do spend on their team, and they develop their talent extremely well. It's time for them to move. It is. I've never liked Tampa baseball. It's a pain to get to. You're not moving to Tampa, so there's no point to be there. You had an opportunity for the betterment of baseball. Even if the Rays are not going to move, you had a chance to test a different market. You could have tested Salt Lake City, which is 1.27 million people. You could have tested Nashville, which has somewhere around 3 million people. Right. You could have tested Louisville, Kentucky, which has 1.27 million people. There's no baseball teams around in Kentucky. That would have given you a great opportunity to test that market. There's a lot of places you could have tested could have and you to, failed. You could have went to Memphis. You could have played. You could have played for the short term in New Orleans at the Superdome if you wanted to keep them in the area. But you're not putting a baseball team in New Orleans. No. So there's no, no point to go there. As a stopgap measure, the only thing that this is going to prove, and I will say there is one thing that might get proved through this, they're playing in Tampa. Well, so there is you go. anybody going to go to that? Are they going to sell out that little Class A stadium night after night in the heat of Tampa Bay, Florida in the summertime? If they go there, maybe it'll prove that, okay, we've got to be in Tampa. And St. Petersburg drops their objections, and they just build it someplace over there. Maybe that's what they're actually testing. Maybe. They're going to have to play a lot of night games, though. They're all going to be night games. Have to be. You cannot play day games in Tampa in the summertime. You may be able to do it in April, but... What do you do if the Rays go to the World Series? Oh, my God, would that be a joke? I'd love it because it would be so foobar. I mean, because you're playing in the single-A ballpark. Yeah. And that's your home stadium. I mean, maybe they'd move it to Raymond James at that point. Well, can you imagine broadcasting games from there? I mean, major. they do it. I know, but major television networks going there, it'd be a joke. Oh, I want it to happen. Well, it's going to be like going to the Field of Dreams. Or when they played in Birmingham, Alabama last year. Yeah. You know, they'll make do and they'll figure it out and make it look nice because they're good at broadcasting games, but they shouldn't in this case. Sorry, Tampa. You shouldn't have a team. But All right. You mentioned sorry. I also mentioned a roof that caved in in Tampa. You did. Let's talk about another roof. You stole my segue. I know. I had to. I was going to say, you mentioned sorry. Let's talk about another sorry scene, which is in Dallas. It was perfect. And you had to ruin it. I've been doing too good. My, You're threatened by my me. My segue way was good. It was also good. Because the roof in Dallas, as they were trying to open it Sunday or whenever they were playing. Last night, Monday night. They did. Yeah. I mean, it's talk about a whole organization falling apart. I mean, this team had Super Bowl aspirations. Well, they thought. You they sign did. your three players. You figure that out. Everybody's saying sign your three players and you'll be fine. Okay. Well, now you have all these contracts out there. A quarterback that literally ripped the hamstring off of his bone. Ouch. I mean, he's he's in trouble. That's almost as bad as an Achilles tear. Achilles tear. I don't know which one's worse. They both sound pretty terrible, but ripping a muscle actually off the bone uh, sounds pretty nasty and not something I ever want to experience. Bo Jackson did that. Yeah, it ended his it career. Ended his career. You see bodybuilders do it, and... They keep working out, which is just shows their freaks of nature. But this takes Dallas. They lose to Houston last night in a game where Houston didn't play that well until the end of the game. Right. Taking Dallas to three and seven. Now, last week on the show, we and when Russ was on here, he suggested you got to play Trey Lance. Find out what you've got. You do. Cooper Rush is not the answer. Problem is, though, is you have a coach that has no reason to Try that. Why am I going to help this organization that's about to fire me? They wouldn't give me a contract extension after going 12 and 5, three years in a row. Mm -hmm. Clearly, they're looking for the next bigger, better thing. So why would I help out this organization? I'm going to do what I think is best for this team to win. 
and that's Cooper Rush for them. And Jerry has no control over that roster. It's going to be interesting to see because right now they're headed for a very high draft pick because I don't see I don't see them turning around and, and winning out. What are they? I looked this up. Three and are, seven right now. They have the ninth overall draft pick as of now. They've lost five in a row. And they probably are going to continue that losing streak. It's the second longest losing streak. The only one longer is Vegas right now, the Raiders, who have a six-game losing streak. Vegas, Raiders. This is a nightmare through. situation. I mean, what do you do next? I don't see any reason to fire McCarthy. Uh, no, he's a good coach, but you got to give him Cowboys the Cowboys fans to work don't with. agree. I know. They're, they want to run him out of town on a rail. But they want to do that to all their coaches. Ever since Jimmy Johnson, they've wanted to run all their coaches out on a rail. But how do you continue to build a team if you continue to go through coaches? They're going to be embarrassed again this week. They play the Commanders. You said Commanders. I did. I wow. did. Because I just read it. <laughs> Unfortunately, I was going to say Redskins and Commanders came out. All right. But they play Washington. They're going to lose that game. Probably. It's Unless all of a sudden they have some sort of resurgence. They haven't fixed their offensive line. It's a nightmare. They did nothing for their running game where they had every opportunity to do so. I think that's what's killed them more than anything. But at this point, do you, do you look to trade a Micah Parsons to try to get a draft pick? I would. I would have traded him already. They got to do something. As, at some point, you got to tear down and rebuild. Where do you think McCarthy goes? Because I don't think he's going to be back in Dallas. I think they're going to go and get Belichick or Dion or whoever. I mean, I think he's going to have to take an offense coordinator position. Unless all of a sudden you put him in New York with the Jets, reunite him back with Rodgers. Oh, that would be funny. Rodgers gets him fired in Green Bay, and he goes back to coach him in, the, in New York. I mean, let bygones be bygones. They won a lot of games together and won a Super Bowl together. Well, let's talk about the Jets because they also lost. Not only yeah. lost, they fired Joe Douglas. Right. Who, in 2022, had drafted both the offensive and defensive rookie of the year. That was... He a year built, and a half ago. He built a good team. Their defense was expected to be top in the league. Traded for Devontae Adams. And their mm -hmm. defense was top in the league until you fired Salah, which doesn't make a lot of sense. And I have to think that has to do with his firing. Yes. He, well, because look, he got rid of Salah. Salah was the best coach on that team. And he, had a, he was a great defensive coach. He is a great defensive coach. And now they're just floundering again. And you've got... A very old Aaron Rodgers who looks like he's still not recovered from the Achilles tear. And he, there's no connection. There's no symmetry on that team. He's not in any kind of communication with his receivers. So I just don't see where they're going to get any better anytime soon. I mean, you have Tyrod Taylor sitting behind him. So here's my question. Is it time to bench Aaron Rodgers? No, they're not going to bench him for the same reasons the Packers wouldn't bench Jordan Love in that game. Well, it's they... a different situation. Aaron Rodgers, 40 years old, coming off a torn Achilles. He's not moving the way he well, was before. But he's under contract for next year, and he's going to be back next year. He is, but you can play it off as he's still hurt and see what you can get out of Tyrod Taylor. Tyrod Taylor. I don't see it. They're going to ride with Rodgers all the way and hope he somehow finds magic again. Yeah, that is a great name, though, if uh, Tyrod Taylor ever became a bodybuilder. He could be Tyroid Taylor and be the greatest bodybuilder of all time. Thank you. My, uh, my question with the Jets is, will Devontae Adams be back next year? He's under contract next year. Big cap hit. $38 million. He has a, I actually looked this up before the show, he has a $38 million cap hit for 2025. So unless they trade him, he's not going anywhere. In 2026, he has a $38 million cap hit as well, and then the last two years are void. He's there the next two years. He's with the Jets. I'm not so sure about that. What are you going to do with him? Are you going to cut him? No, you're going to trade him. Somebody will give you a draft pick for him. He's an expensive wide receiver in his 30s. Somebody's going to want him. That's a Super Bowl contender. But he's just as good as he ever was. You're right. The but question is with Aaron Rodgers, and I said this last week, he's not as good as he once was, but can he be as good once as he ever was? Not and that's for, what we're waiting to see for a season. Not for 17 games. I just don't see it anymore. I mean, you got the team around him. It's just you need a coach that can come in there and make the right play calls and just 
give Rodgers an opportunity to do what he does. His but, arm's still there. But he's Aaron Rodgers, and he thinks he's the coach. He's got an ego bigger than anybody I've ever seen well, he's at been quarterback. He, uh, yeah, but has he been humbled to the point where he will take coaching? I don't know. I, I don't know the answer to that, but it's a mess. And again, the question is, is, is it time to put him on the sideline and well, see what you have with Tyrod Taylor? Then he'll never play another down in New York. I don't think Jets fans would be that upset about it. He said he's coming back next year. He's not going to go out like this. You have a Super Bowl roster there. I'm, I'm just still confused okay. how this didn't all come together. Will he then do what he has to do, which is work with that team all offseason? I don't know. The, I mean, that's a I problem. think he will because here's the thing about egomaniacs, right? When your ego gets bruised, one of two things are going to happen. You're going to run away, which doesn't sound like he's doing, and he's not blaming a bunch of other people, at least not in public, or you're going to get your ass to work and show – this is who I am. He's going to show up instead of taking a three-day vacation right in the middle of, at the beginning of training It's camp? one year. It's one year. You have to think that this is a situation. There's no eclipse during training camp this time around, <laughs> so there's no reason to go to Egypt to watch it. He should be in camp. You have Devontae Adams there now, too, who's staying with him that says, we got to work this out and make this happen. The Jets are going to be a dangerous team next year, but that's also the question. Okay, not only do you have Tyrod Taylor back there, but how many games do you actually want to win? Because you can sell Rodgers on, hey, we're going to go get a high draft pick. We're going to get another get, offensive though? lineman. I mean, the fashion who they draft is their starting left tackle right now. That's another question for Joe Douglas here, is not only did two years ago he draft the rookie of the year in Sauce Gardner for defense and the offensive rookie of the year in Garrett Wilson, but this past year, he drafted Fashionu, who is now your starting left tackle as mm -hmm. a rookie. So he has this history of making these great draft picks, at least in the first round, and a team that's built well. And on top of the mess that is the Jets, they may lose their owner. Yeah, well, that's the other question. So Woody Johnson is clearly pulling the strings. Woody Johnson, when Trump was president last time around, became the ambassador for the United Kingdom. There's a lot of thought that that's about to happen again during this organization or uh, this term. I don't know what the right word is for that. But um, so if he goes and does that, does that again, then his brother's going to take over the team, which is the person that hired Joe Douglas, which is the person that hired Robert Sala. Uh, actually, I think Woody Johnson hired Robert Sala. I, I just don't well, think... Joe Douglas hired Robert Sala, which was hired by his brother. I don't think Joe Douglas... He was a scapegoat in this. He's a good GM. He built a good team. He'll get a job next year for somebody, yeah. either Las Vegas or somebody else. Well, on Maybe the Jacksonville. In the same stadium, just on different weeks. That's the problem. Got... I mentioned this before. The problem is the Jets are playing in the Giants stadium, so they're cursed. They need to get okay. their own stadium, and they won't have that problem. Well, what's anymore. the Giants' excuse? I don't have one. <laughs> they, they signed Daniel Jones to a... Uh, $40 million a year contract. And he's now their third string quarterback. Yeah, not only was he benched, but he is now the third string quarterback. And for some reason, they're not starting Drew Locke, who you paid $5 million to come in. You're starting Tommy DeVito. Dayball saying he gave a spark last year. I think it's a different situation here. I don't think they're looking for a spark. I don't think so either. I think they're looking to... There's only a couple, maybe three quarterbacks in this draft that are really top of the line table it's not like last year where there's a lot of top talent at quarterback there's only a few uh, the Giants I... aren't drafting a quarterback this upcoming draft okay they're at where number four right now for the draft they are fourth in the draft right now yes they will draft a quarterback no they won't they will draft a quarterback they're not going to go with drew lock they draft their wide receiver this year well drew lock is not going to be a start he's on a one-year contract five million dollars if... So if they bring him back it's going to be on another short-term deal. But there's a quarterback this year who was on a short-term deal or is currently who will be a free agent because the team he's on now isn't going to re-sign him. If you're talking about the Vikings, they will re-sign to Sam Darnold. They're not re-signing Sam Darnold. They will you have J.J. McCarthy, who you just drafted with the number 9th or 11th overall pick, one of those two. If the Vikings make the playoffs, they will re-sign the Sam Darnold. The Vikings are making the playoffs. There's no then doubt that they're making the they're playoffs. they're bringing back Darnold. They are not. He's been a if I'm the Giants, quarterback. 
If I'm the Giants, you're going to throw a lot of money at Sam Darnold. I'm going to sign Sam Darnold. You're insane. Listen, you have Dayball, who has a contract that runs through 2026, right? Dayball, the only reason he's starting Danny, De- or Danny DeVito, hey, Danny DeVito, Tommy DeVito, hey, Gabagool, huh? Uh, the only reason they're starting DeVito, one, he's a fan favorite. And so you're going to sell tickets, sure. even though your team's terrible. Two, is they're, they're tanking right now. Yes. They're going for a top pick. To Which get the would best mean they can. that they've got. There's no quarterback to take. You're not getting Clint Ewers, who's going number one overall. Are you? Are you kidding? Sanders is going number one overall. No. Ewers is going number one got, overall. You, Travis Hunter may go number one well, overall, depending on who it is. It's Jacksonville. So Travis yeah, Hunter may go number Travis. one overall, as of now. Jacksonville or Tennessee, as of this moment. And then Cleveland's third. So who knows how this wraps up. In this draft, you've got Cam Ward out of Miami. Who's going to be good. And you've got Quinn Ewers, who I don't think is going to be a top-level NFL quarterback myself. And you have Shadur Sanders. Who is great. If Dallas has a number one pick, which I think they may tank as well. I don't, they just don't have the the legs right now. They bring in Sanders. They're going to bring in Dion to coach him. Probably. Well, there's your answer in Dallas. Poor Colorado. What a nightmare. It's a bad situation. I don't think it's smart for them to draft a quarterback in this year's draft. I just don't. You're going to draft one, though, because you've got to build a team around a quarterback. You don't have one. There's no sign you're going to get one Either in next way, year's draft. Either way, okay, say you draft a quarterback. You still sign Sam Darnold. You don't sign Sam Darnold. Sign He's Sam Darnold. Stay. You need him to sit. If you can sign Sam yeah. Darnold to a three-year contract and have a quarterback Whoa. sit behind him for three J. years. J.J. McCarthy is still going to be a rookie next year. He was injured. He needs to sit as a backup quarterback. No. They're going to bring back Darnold to be their starter again You're next year. They're not signing year. Darnold. They're going to have to sign him to a six-year contract. They're going to sign him to a, a normal NFL contract. He's five, going to demand five, $50 million dollars a year. $50 million a year. Yeah. The and Giants be- can afford that once they get rid of no. Daniel Jones. Oh, so they're going to make another mistake with Sam Darnold and sign him for five years. Four years. And you Minnesota draft a quarterback, have him sit behind. Minnesota can do the same thing and have J.J. McCarthy sit behind him for two or three years and then move him in. They're not going to let make him sense. go. The time yeah, frame makes, shorter. It makes much more time sense. frame shorter. You bring in Sam Darnold. You have Dayball, who is going to be kept. The, the Mara seem to like Dayball a lot. So he's staying. But he needs to start winning. And to do that, you need a quarterback. Yes, but it's not going to be Sam Darnold. It is, because there's going to be a new GM. Dayball's going to stay GM gone. Oh. That's what's going to happen here. If No, if I'm Sam Darnold, yes. if I'm Sam Darnold, I want to stay in Minnesota where I've got a great relationship with the coach. Yeah, I'm sure he does. No. But that's not going to happen. The Vikings are moving on. They're going with J.J. McCarthy. They will not. They're starting quarterback next year. That would be so foolish to start a true rookie again next year. It's the Vikings. No, they've got a decent team this year. You can add to it and make them even better next year. And Sam not Darnold, what's happen. Sam Darnold will have another year experience working in Minnesota. No, they're going to stick with them. It's they're, not happening. Not Sam going to Darnold, New York. Mark my words. Mark it on the show. Sam Darnold is going to be signed by the New York Giants next year. It's going to happen. And you, they, even if they do draft a quarterback, that quarterback's going to sit behind. There's too much data now okay. that shows that if you sit your quarterback for a couple of years. You're going to have then success why with that quarterback. It, why wouldn't Minnesota do the same thing? Because for Minnesota, it's going to require a much longer contract. It's going to cost them three to four years, just the same as it is in New York. It's not. Oh, my God. J- the problem is J.J. McCarthy is going to need to start year four if you do that, right? So you're going to have to sign Sam Darnold to a four or five-year contract. So that means two years in, you're going to bench a $50 million this quarterback? Is, this is the NFL. Two years they in, you're going to bench a $50 million quarterback? It's three, not going to happen. Three years. No. The last two were avoided. You've already had year one of the rookie contract. It was four years with a fifth-year option. You want him starting year four so not, you see what you have. Sam Darnold is going to be starting in Minnesota. Tell me I'm wrong, year. though. You're wrong. J.J. McCarthy is starting year four of his rookie contract at, at minimum. Year four. Mm. I'm not sure. You have They're to. They're going to ride Darnold. You're going to they... gonna give this quarterback a fifth-year option? And not have him start the year before, you're not going to J- happen. JJ McCarthy is not going to be ready next year. You've got to have Darnold in there for another year and you sign him to a. That's why Minnesota is going to bring in no. Aaron Rodgers. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
this cycle needs to be finished. Okay? Oh my God. The cycle of Packers quarterbacks needs to be finished. <laughs> and then Jordan Love will someday go to the, the Jets, Jets and then and to the, the Vikings. Vikings. I see after how this getting works. getting a new Hall of Famer. That's how this works. Yeah. It doesn't make we're, sense, but I'm I'm serious though. Let's do the math on this, okay? Because I want you to understand where I'm coming. I from. know where you're coming from, and I don't agree sign with him you. Sign into a five-year contract, right? Say you get him on four I don't years. Think, say you get ten. Let me finish. Don't sign him to three. Say you get him on a four-year. He's not signing for three years. He's going to sign minimum four years. Say you get him to a four-year contract. Two years in, you're going to bench him. That third year of that contract is J.J. McCarthy's fourth year. You're going to have to start him year four. You I, have no choice. I am not sure J.J. McCarthy is going to be the answer, and I don't think the Vikings I understand that, will be. But he's a high draft pick. Year four, he is starting. That is going to happen. I, if you go into the Giants and you sign Sam Darnold to a four-year contract, okay, that last year of that contract, you bench him. If they draft a quarterback. Whatever rookie you draft. You're going to sit, say it's Sanders. Say they get him. Yeah. You're going to sit him for three years. It's not happening. It, it's proven time and time and time again to work. Really? Shadur Sanders is more like Jaden Daniels. And even last week, Caleb Williams, than he is a normal rookie. I'm just saying, I see Sam Darnold going to the Giants. They can build the team elsewhere, especially on the defensive side of the ball. It makes too no. much sense to use that I, pick on really good defensive or offensive line talent. I don't think it makes sense at all. You signed Sam Darnold, but you're right about Caleb Williams. What a different-looking quarterback he was last week. Was he, was he better, or was the Packers' defense just very porous? They couldn't put pressure on him. They couldn't Probably keep him in the, pocket, in the pocket. Or in the pocket. That, too. I mean, both they ran a, The Packers' run defense, something's got to happen. It's uh, it's pretty bad. I mean, I think uh, I stole this from Wayne Larravee, and I think he said it right. The issue is, is there's they get in the backfield too quick. They don't have anybody sitting back waiting for the running back. That's what we're going with. It's true. If you watch the Packers, they're in that they backfield quick, quick. Yeah, and a running back just goes right by them. You don't have those big guys sitting there because you don't have the ends. Lucas Van Ness. to the quarterback. Lucas we, Van Ness. Rashawn Gary's been such an underperformer. Lucas Van Ness, we said it on draft night. It was stupid. It was a stupid, stupid pick, pick, and he is a bust. Yeah. He's not going to be the guy. There's a reason. He, he could only, be. He only played third downs in Iowa. I understand. He's an incredible physical specimen. Yeah. But he is not the guy that's going to put a pressure on a quarterback play after play after play. He didn't at the end of the game. They had who? Um... Cooper. Cooper was in there and a rookie. Was, yeah. So I just I don't see it. And uh and Nick Big uh, or whatever his name is. Uh I mean they've been our two best rushers. I keep running with them. The problem is you don't have those edge rushers that get there. And so our defensive tackles are forced to push through to get back to the quarterback, and they keep pushing to get to the quarterback, and then the running back's gone. Caleb Williams looked much better, but again, he wasn't taking easy throws. My question is. And I, I haven't agreed with you this whole time about Eberflus. Yes. This past week changed my opinion. There's 30 seconds left in the game. It's a 46-yard field goal. Yes. You have a timeout. And it was Brenton Cox, by the way, that had – that's the guy I was thinking of. He had two sacks on that. Oh, it was Cox. You're right. Yes. But you have an opportunity to run the ball and get a few extra yards. Odds of fumbling are very small. 0.046%. Very, very, very small. Very small. 0.46%. And you use a timeout. Yeah. But instead, they let the clock run down. Use their timeout. You have a kicker who, inside 40 yards, hasn't missed a field goal his entire career. Not one. Mm -hmm. Never missed one. And instead, you put him outside, which he's like a 60% field goal kicker, and he misses. By the way, the Bears have sent the tape in saying that the Packers – Pushed through the line. Yeah, they 100% the did. The Packers cheated. And that's okay. No, they got the flag. Yes, they no, did. No, they didn't. Okay. No, they I'm did. a homer. We know this. I'm a Packer fan. I'm a homer. Packers broke the rules. <laughs> they, <laughs> they got, got away the, with it. They pushed and they demolished the long snapper, which you're not allowed to do. That's been called this year several times. Yes, I know. And why know. it wasn't called for that game, I'll take it, but definitely should have been a penalty. But they get the block, and I think. It's a great win. I got my I still own you t-shirt on. Is it, was it a great win? Any win's a great win. I'm 
I'm questioning the Packers. Anyone Jordan, Lo- Jordan Love continues to make mistakes and throw interceptions. I grant you, you say he's more like Brett Favre, and that's fine, but it's a different game now. You have to have more ball protection. The interception he made was him not setting his feet. That's all it was. Threw he threw up his he, back foot. This is what I saw from, that, from Jordan Love in that play. He saw Watson in the back of the end zone, and he was getting ready to go for him. At the last second, he saw the safety coming over and saw that Kraft was now open. He tried to adjust in mid-throw and ended in this in-between zone. And overthrew Kraft. And, he, and overthrew Kraft. Because he, he lip, you could see his arm change direction in the middle of that throw, and he was trying to go for Kraft at the last second after making the decision to go to Watson, and it was a bad throw. Look, Russ Landy was right when he was on the show. They've shut down the quick passes that yes. Love was so good at last year. He's got to go through his progressions quicker and make better throws and step into those throws. I mean, Watson made an incredible catch on a pass yeah. that Love should have thrown better. And had the mindset to get up and keep running. Yes. I mean, that's the evolution of a wide receiver that we were hoping to see with Christian Watson. Look, I just want to see Love clear up his mechanics. Yeah. He's got the best quarterback coach in history in Tom he Clements. He's playing his feet. Playing his feet. Step into the throw and be more accurate. We saw this with Rodgers in the first two years. Rodgers learned a lot of bad mistakes from Brett Favre that he had to then adjust to make his own. We're seeing Love do this same thing. He's going to be fine. The other problem is with the Packers that I see, their defense was on the field for over 44 minutes of that game. Right. You cannot do that. They just were gassed at the end, which is why you saw Williams able to scramble when they had him a couple times. There's a couple guys on the team that I think there's players that are better. Cox needs to be in the game more. Rodgers needs to be in the game more. Some of the veterans, I know you paid them money. That's why you you traded Preston Smith, was to free up room for these guys. Rashawn Gary's got to be better. Or you've got to just play Cooper and call it a day. Cooper's more of a linebacker style. Uh uh, the other guy that's got to step up is uh, who's our middle linebacker, number seven. Why can't I think of his name? Gary. No, not sure. Gary. He's 52. Uh, Walker. Quay Walker. Walker. Quay Walker has to be better. I mean, there's a lot of see. people running around him. I don't he looks see lost it. on the field I a lot. I don't see it. That's where Cooper plays better. He does. It's an interesting. You have to also remember there's a transition between a 4-3 and a 3 to a 3 uh, from a 3-4 to a 4-3 this year. Which is why Preston Smith was traded correct because he doesn't like the four three correct and so you're having to kind of move things around a little bit players are still getting used to positions it's going to take a year to get the talent in there to really be that defense again do i think this super bowl team no i don't this is definitely a playoff team i think they could win a playoff game but what are they going to do against the 49ers we're going to do our picks later but i'm really worried about this game i'm not well, it depends on Christian McCaffrey. I mean, Christian McCaffrey is going to run all over the field. And so this is where Love really needs to step up, control the game, make sure they're on the field longer than the 49ers. Well, Fleur's got to clean up his play crawling, too, because when he's down there at that two-point conversion he had, everybody in the stadium knew he was going to run the ball, and they got... That was an backfield. option. That was, was a bad choice by Love. A, should have been a rollout. It was a rollout. It was it just, You had a guy running wide open to the right, Love had a choice to either hand the ball off or to pull it back and pass. He obviously saw something at different, this, and he should he should have made that throw. That's this, not Lafleur bad it, play calling. That's Love making a bad decision. No, it's bad play calling because they shouldn't put an option in there at that time. You got to tell Love this is what you're looking for, and this is what we're going to run. Who knows that he didn't? That was a bad decision by the quarterback. It was a bad play by the Packers in general because what? they do it all the time when they're down there. They just run the ball. I'm putting it on LaFleur. You can put it on Love if you want. Either way, it's cost, it should have cost us a game. We're getting into real football now, right? And this is what Thanksgiving. we've been waiting to see. We always say this. Thanksgiving is the start of the football season. We're not the only ones. A lot of people say that. You put yourself in a position, and then Thanksgiving starts real football. These are where the mistakes now need to be cleaned up. We're coming into real football, and if you're going to compete with a team like the Lions, who demolished the Jacksonville Jaguars this past weekend, you got a lot of work to do. I mean, because they've got 
the Lions, the Vikings, and the Bears. Vikings I'm not worried about. Vikings are going to Vikings. They always do at the end of the year. They're a playoff team. You're going to get three teams from the NFC North. There's no doubt about it. The Rams are 5-5. Five and five. I do not see them sneaking into the playoffs unless one team implodes. You don't. You have Washington's at 7-3 and three, or 7-4 and four right now. I get you it. Green Bay at 7-3. and three. The Eagles and, Command- and Washington are going to get in. The Redskins will be in. Yes, they are seven and three right now. The or seven and four. Packers are seven and three. The Vikings are eight and two. Yeah, and the Rams are not getting in unless all of a sudden the Cardinals start to fall apart, and they're six and four. So they're going to be division winners. The Forty ers can go on a heater and run the table, and then they'll be in. They're also five and five, but I think that's a fight for the West. I don't think any second team makes the playoffs from the West. I don't. I still think one will. Well, then you're kicking out an NFC North team. Yeah. It'll be either be the Packers or Vikings. It'll be out. I don't see that. I think the Commanders are the ones that are going to have to, to fall out, if anything. I think you're getting one team from the West. They're going to beat each other up towards the end of the season. Division games are starting. I know. I know. One of them's going to... I don't think, see the Cardinals. I see San Francisco fully capable of going on a run and winning outright. It could be. I mean, they got the talent around them. They're starting to get healthy again. Purdy's looking comfortable back there. He's going to be another big contract guy. He's going to be the starting quarterback for the 49ers for a long time. Well, he's earned it. Sam Darnold is going to be the starting quarterback for the Giants. Would you stop with that? It's going to happen. All right, so last week, week 11 already, I was 4-1. and one. You were 2-3. and three. Yeah, so let's talk about this. We so, talked about it in the beginning. So for the season, you're 27-29. and 29. Right where I'm supposed to be. I'm... 38, 19. So when we started this season, because of last year, we named it Picks Guaranteed to Go Wrong. Yeah. You are wrecking this segment. I'm not wrecking this segment. I don't know why these picks are coming home for me. Don't bet on what I say. Apparently you should. You've had one losing week. One. And that's because you literally followed my picks. And that's your fault. And I just, wow. I have no idea. I have no answers. I keep waiting for regular picks to come back. 38 and 19. That's insane. It's lucky. Blind squirrel finds nut. Every single week except one? I mean, how many four in one weeks have you had? This has to be your third or fourth, I've if had not it. fifth, fourth, four in one week. I've had it. This is insane. So we're renaming this. It's going to be Kyle's picks guaranteed to go wrong. What games we got? All right. We're going to start with Lions at the Colts this week. Anthony Richardson looked real good last week. He did. He looked like he learned a lesson, and he showed up and showed he's ready to play. I said when he was drafted, he has a chance to be the best quarterback out of that draft class, and he still may be. Maybe. The Lions. People got mad at the Lions last week because they kept scoring and kept their starters in. It's the NFL. That's Dan Campbell right there. Yeah. You put your foot on their throat. And you continue to put pressure on it until it's done. Mm-hmm. You never That's let what the up. Lions do. Every team should learn that lesson. I 100% agree. We've seen it happen too many times where all of a sudden clock management and another team comes back. Right. The Texans did that to the Lions, which is why they won two weeks and ago. The, and the Texans have learned when you have them down, you better pile on. Correct. They did. It, they learned because they did it to Dallas on Monday Night Football. Right. Lions are too good. Yeah. They are an outstanding team. The Lions are winning this game, I think, fairly easily. Cardinals at the Seahawks. We've talked a little bit about the NFC West. Cardinals are looking real, real good all of a sudden. They are on quite the winning streak. I think they've won their last five games or so. I don't have it in front of me right now. Marvin Harrison Jr. is looking every bit the top draft pick he is. I want to see what the winning streak is for the Arizona Cardinals right here. Four-game winning streak right now. They are looking absolutely outstanding. Kyler Murray is looking like a pro bowler yet again. The Seahawks, I don't really know what to make of them anymore. They're 5-5. Five and five. Some weeks they look good. Some weeks they don't. At some point, they've got to make the move away from Geno Smith. I think it's coming pretty quick here. It's in Seattle. Tough place to play. But I'm taking the Cardinals to win this As game. As am I. Stop it. You're in danger. I'm making my picks before you talk. <laughs> That's a good call. I'm going to ramble, so you have plenty of time. Next game is going to be very interesting. Eagles at the Rams. Rams looked good last week. We talked about the Eagles a lot last week. They've really turned it around. Sirianni's gotten the buy-in back in that team. The Rams, I don't know what to make of them. 
I really don't. But they looked good last week. Mm-hmm. It's got, in L.A. Got great receivers. You still have Stafford. I'm going to take the Rams this week. Damn it. I wrote it down. Rams. Stop it. You're going to have a bad week. We're no, going to go back to face guaranteed to go wrong. Now I might change it. To, I think I should change to the Eagles. Ravens at the Chargers. Are you keeping it, Rams? It's a pick that I made. All I, right. wrote it, I wrote it down before you make your pick. I think you're going to be mad at this one, too. Chargers are a different team. Harbaugh is one of the best coaches in any league, anywhere. Yeah, the fifth overall pick last year. Uh huh. Fifth overall pick. Traded their top two wide receivers. Picked one of the best. He, he's going to be a Hall of Fame offensive lineman. Joe if Alt. He, Joe Alt, if he doesn't get hurt. It was a brilliant pick. The Ravens lost last week, and they. I think we saw the formula on how to beat the Ravens. And Harbaugh. Now, Lamar Jackson still looked great. Yeah. Even though the Ravens lost, Lamar Jackson still looked great. But if you can stop the run. Do not say it. I'm picking the Chargers. Don't say it. Damn I'm picking you. the Chargers to win this game. I'm there right now. Chargers. You suck. I told you you're going to be mad at me. We have the same picks. Final game. This is where we're going to differ. 49ers at the Packers. I, I know you're picking the Niners because you, you don't, are Brutus. I am not. And Cassius. At two Brute? No. And you're also going to be chewed on by the head of Satan. So <laughs> that two Brute. That was two that was two novels. One play, one novel. I guess it's technically a poem. Would you talk about the game? Is Devante's Inferno Divine Comedy a poem or is it's it a, a book? It is a book. Yeah. I think it's considered a poem. It's the longest poem in history, then. I think it is. All right. Anyways. Julius Caesar is definitely a play. Would you stop? Talk about the game. Green Bay Packers are in trouble. They Very much so. They didn't look great last week. They, Jordan Love has to settle down. Packers go how their quarterback goes. LaFleur can't win against... Uh, Kyle Shanahan. Thank you. His name just went away. <laughs> well, gonna... Packers haven't beat the Niners, I think, in my lifetime. I mean, it's been quite the journey against them. Shanahan just... Mental games against LaFleur. He wins them. It's in Green Bay. It's going to be cold. It's yes. going to be very, very could, cold. It could be snowing. It could be snowing. Either way, it's going to be raining. It's going to be a nasty game. A lot of what we saw last week, which I think should benefit the Packers. I don't know, though. I, I, I don't pick against the Packers. We all know that's my rule. So I'm going the Packers here, but I think it's going to be a close game. And until... The Packers beat the 49ers until LaFleur shows he can. I just think the 49ers are the most dangerous team in the NFC because they're starting to get healthy again. They've got a lot of talent on that team, and this is really the last year before they start losing players. In the frozen ninth circle of hell. I'm taking the 49ers. I hope I'm wrong. Satan has a new I'm, body I'm to chew I'm hoping on. I'm wrong. I'm hoping I'm wrong, as always. But I also pick with my head not with my heart and i may be in deep trouble considering we were the same hey, on four picks i think this means either i'm four and one or five and oh which would be my second or third winning neither one of us have been five year. and oh this year i'm 27 and 29 i gotta make a run at this thing if we're all i just want to finish above 500 that's all i ever want i it's your fault. You you followed me. Never forget that. I put my picks down before you started talking. You and I have as a, have had a great show, but as you all know, you cannot have a conversation with your dad without your father getting the last word. So it is all you. So this week I was thinking about the fact of coaching and coaching my kids. I've got three kids. The boys were both good athletes. Kyle was one of those athletes that he had to work at it to get better, and he did. My younger son, Ryan, was a natural athlete, but he wasn't really into sports that much. They both got into tennis and were outstanding high school players. Got to state. They did very, very well. My daughter played tennis a little bit. But the one thing I made a rule when I was coaching them was I was going to let their talent find their own way, and I wasn't going to push them. If either one of them would have showed unbelievable skill as a baseball player or as a tennis player, I was going to get them to John Paulus, which I did, and they became good players, but they made the decision to do it. 
too many times in today's society, if a kid shows any kind of talent, parents are going to say, I'm invested all this money, you will play and you will go. And guess what happens? The kid gets burned out and he doesn't want to do it anymore. The kids who really succeed have parents who support them and make sure they do the right things right, but they push for their own satisfaction. This is not about the parents, it's about the kids. Don't push your kids to live vicariously through them. Watch them, enjoy them, and cheer on their success. And guess what? They're going to go a lot farther than they would if you're there pushing them all the way. That's it. You push pretty hard. I push when you, yeah, when you were on the court, I said, yeah, if you're going to be on the court, we're going to work. It was great. I don't say it was but, bad. But you made the decision to play. It's true. On your own. It's true. If a, if I hit a shot and it bounced twice because you were too lazy to go and get it, yeah, I was all over you. Yeah, just I did stairs. Yes, John Paulus walked off the court on me when I did that one time. Yeah. In the however dozen years I worked with him, I let one ball bounce twice, and he goes, "You're going to do that." There's no point working together. You did the same thing, and we are going to talk more next week about coaching between fathers and sons as we have Northwestern Hall of Famer and all-time leading scorer. Jeff Budzine with his father, Bill Budzine. So don't miss that for our Thanksgiving episode. Thank you, as always, so much for watching. This has been Sports Talk with Dad. We'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.